poruszone spryskuje się specjalny płynę, którego dostarczają stacje obrony roślin. As a junior in college, I wrote an essay. It was a rebuttal of a course book assignment. The book was The Open Veins of Latin America, and my thesis for the rebuttal of the theories introduced by the book revolved around one country, Poland. Every situation that happens, so the, the Nazi occupation, the Soviet occupation, happened without any and the re reason from our side, yes? We yeah. had no nothing to say. You were helpless. We were just alone, yeah. yeah. We just, we were just here and uh, they came. You see, it seems almost impossible to make a case that any country had it more difficult in the 20th century than Poland. A nation that repeatedly saw itself at ground zero of power struggles and conflicting ideologies. Invaded, partitioned, and recklessly ran over by Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union, there is no shortage of viable excuses for the country to be underdeveloped. Millions of reasons to play the victim card over the atrocities inflicted upon them. And yet, here we are. The world's 21st largest economy, the EU sixth. A constant upward growth since the fall of communism 30 years ago. Poland is the anti-victim card, a shining example of perseverance, a country that has always garnered my respect as a man with a degree in international relations. And that brings me to Warsaw, Poland's capital and home to 1.7 million people. What you'll notice off the bat is that large stretches of the city suffer from Soviet-era architecture. That's because 85 to 90 percent of the city was completely obliterated in World War II. And as luck would have it, the communist times brought about reconstruction. The city is dissected in half by the Vistula, the river that runs through it. Oftentimes, the neighborhoods located on the eastern side of the river are loosely referred to as the Praga district. When communism collapsed, this once factory-heavy district became attractive to artists and creative types due to cheap cost of living and location. It seems like a broken record, and seemingly every major western city developed one for the same reason, but this can be identified as Warsaw's hipster neighborhood. The suitable choice to place a museum dedicated to fluorescent lighting advertisements. Lo and behold, the Neon Museum. Seemingly fitting for this side of town, the uncomfortably hot and seizure-inducing museum provides plenty of photo ops for those of us who enjoy the music of Bright Eyes and Arcade Fire. A helpful dose of nostalgia for the Polish visitors who actually recognize the brands of these glaring signs that were posted throughout the years of their childhood. As I am not one for museums in general, my amusement here perhaps serves of little importance to you. Down the road, 
past the stadium, my type of vibe. A riverbank that serves as a locals only beach, and I say that loosely. A place of congregation. Crack a beer, start a bonfire, and enjoy a Varsovian sunset. Cross the bridge, and the party is just starting along the Vistula. These are the romanticized summer nights that seem to never end. Where friends come to lounge around over inexplicably cheap booze and a bite to eat, withering away the tension of life in the capital in the most humble of ways. A noble riverbank, indeed. Damn good idea. Ameryka. Wystawę pod takim tytułem zwiedzają w Warszawie dziesiątki tysięcy osób. W cieniu posągu wolności policyjna pałka. W kraju wolności miliony ludzi poza prawem. Co czeka tego obywatela wolnego kraju? So this, this is what a typical uh, communist era kindergarten look like? Yeah, well... More than less, it's of course designed uh, design. in this style. Uh, but we start to, we want to keep all the mm, old furniture. This is the symbol. I see the uh, hedgehog. With, <laughs> that was very cool. After the fall of Nazi Germany and Poland's, well, let's call it liberation, Joseph Stalin had something else in mind for the nation. Poland, a long-desired puzzle piece of Stalin, and the Soviet Union in general, became the largest European nation to fall victim to the Iron Curtain. While post-war Western Europe rebuilt itself and grew financially via newly formed trade agreements and communities, Poland remained stagnant, stuck in a socialist utopia of the bare minimum until 1989. Rafal Patla recreates this period with thousands of carefully preserved pieces of nostalgia in his Museum of Life Under Communism in the heart of Warsaw. All right, got a good old taste of communist times. Oh, yes. All right, cheers. 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 That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Taste of communism. Pure water and sugar. <laughs> Obviously, you didn't grow up in this era. What is the meaning behind having a museum like this? Like, what, what's the purpose behind this sort of museum? There was no background to talk about communist times mm. in Poland, in, in Warsaw. So, so um, I needed a space where I can explain to, the get, to guests about these times about how people used to live and so on and um, also uh, I compare foreign tourists to kids, Polish kids, <laughs> because then the knowledge is similar uh, yeah, to Polish exactly. history. So you want to educate the people, yeah. the Polish people, about a time that perhaps they have either chosen to forget what this life was like or simply people who were never born into it and know nothing about it. Yes, yes, yes. So how do you think the post-Nazi communist era affects Polish people today? It's a, it's a part of our uh, mentality now. The new Poland that appeared after the war was completely different. Different borders, different nation, different uh, people. Um, it's a case of Nazi occupation and six million people that died in Poland. Uh, right. So, and uh, comparing to war, so half of the city was destroyed. No, not half, 90, 85% of the city was destroyed. So when, when half of population dies in the city, and the other half is c coming from um, other towns, villages, or so on. Then you have completely different. You're reborn. Society. Do you, or I guess 
certain Polish people hold any resentment towards either Germany or Russia for what happened in the 20th century? Yeah, well, for sure, uh, it's, it's a difficult relation because yeah. uh, because of the, the obvious facts what happened. Yeah, uh, but politics are politics, and people are people. It's not uh, the case of having some bad emotions about people, yeah? Germans or Russians that will uh, that we meet. Yeah, young people. It's no, they, they it's not their fault. Yeah. yeah. Our mentality is that we are for a thousand years in between two big countries, so we are a bit afraid always mm. if we, our independence will be yeah. still. Yeah? What lessons do you think Poland could learn from Nazi occupation and then afterwards Soviet Iron Curtain era? Every situation that happened, so the, the Nazi occupation, the Soviet occupation, happened without any and the re reason from our side, yes, we yeah. had no nothing to say. You were helpless. We were just alone. Yeah, yeah. we just we were just here, and uh, they came. So the, the the maybe the lesson should be for the world uh, to 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 learn from what happened. Yeah, and world never never learn of what happened. And I see that. It will never change, it will be the same, no? No. If the same happens every 40, 50 years, yeah? Every Sunday from May to September, twice a day, you can hear the gentle sounds of a masterfully played grand piano swiftly permeating between the trees and monuments of Warsaw's largest park. Lezienki Park plays host to the Chopin Concert Series, named after Poland's revered 19th century pianist. You might have heard of them. The park itself is a Versailles web of pathways, palaces, and landmarks slowly added on over the generations. It's a nostalgic retreat to enlightened times in the middle of a capital that, as life would have it in the 20th century, usually has no choice but to forget them. Every major European city has an old town, and Warsaw is no different. What does make it different is that its old town is actually a new town. In case you haven't been paying attention, Warsaw was obliterated in World War II, and its residential and historical landmarks were targeted by the Luftwaffe in a blitzkrieg, terror bombing sort of way so as to lower the morale of the citizens. A few years later, when the brave Varsovian citizens revolted in the Warsaw Uprising, the infuriated Nazis decided to make an example of the city, dedicating entire demolition squadrons to purposely burn down, carpet bomb, and level seemingly every square inch of what was left of Warsaw before eventually being kicked out. What you see now is a careful reconstruct sometimes using the original bricks of the once demolished buildings. Even pre-war paintings and leftover architectural blueprints were used to piece it back together. It's a cute part of town, but my reflective and often cynical nature tends to get the best of me. A few of you who have been watching and dedicated fans for quite a while probably know a big fan of cafe. That is the simple art of sitting down at a European cafe, outdoors preferably, and just watching people walk by. I could probably do this for quite a few hours. 
you really don't come to an old town if you want an authentic experience. The whole point of an old town is if you want something safe, say you got a family, you know, you want to bring them to somewhere fun on a Sunday afternoon, you come to an old town. They exist in about every European capital, or city for that matter. Even though most of this is reconstructed, it still has a pretty authentic feel. That as authentic as you can get for any place that has people drawing caricatures, balloons, accordion players, and horses with carriages. Perhaps a few of you are wondering, why hasn't he tried that oh-so-famous of Polish comfort foods? The little morsels that would make a quarter of Chicago scratch their forearm like a fiend. Smack within walking distance of the thick of things is the Hala Gavardi Market Hall and some damn good pierogies. I don't mean to seem stereotypical, but I have not had a pierogi since I've been here, and I need one right now. Come here. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Greasy, fatty, sweet onions. Definitely need napkins. Oh. Just oozes oil. Anytime you have oil just dripping, oozing from your mouth, it can maybe have you question your manhood. But I don't mind. I'm very secure. I don't mind things oozing out of my mouth. You can quote that. I feel like a whore. Mission accomplished. It's not about how hard you fall, but how quickly you get back up. Because falling down is a part of life, getting back up is living. No one knows this better than the Polish, where the scars of the past fuel the desires of their reborn capital. So don't blink, Warsaw is rising.